Uh, my name's Misato, and my pronouns are she, her. And can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Yeah, right, cool. So, some disclaimers. Um, before we get started, uh, everything in this presentation are my personal experiences and opinions, and therefore are not to be taken as facts. And I'm not sponsored by any of the companies, manufacturers, uh, creators, or organizations mentioned. Uh, some more disclaimers, um, everyone's situation is different. Um, I'm talking about these things from um, my perspective um, with my disability and um, and everything that I talk about today may or may not work for um, other people. Um, so that's why I actually am saving some time at the end of the presentation. Um, if uh, people would like to talk about their own experiences um, being a gamer with disabilities. Um, I also want to add that uh, nothing here is medical advice. Please talk to a doctor first before making decisions regarding your health or engaging in a new activity that may affect your health. If you ever feel pain or sickness from an activity, please stop and speak with a doctor. If you're experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. And if you're experiencing a psychiatric emergency, please call 911 or 988. And for more information um, regarding medical, mental health, and accessibility services in your area, please call your insurance company, uh, 211, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, or the National Alliance on Mental Illness, NAMI. So a little bit about me. I've been playing video games since 1999. I love cute, cheesy, and happy video games. So like Pokemon, Slime Rancher, House of the Dead, uh, Dance Dance Revolution. Um, and I dress up as video game characters sometimes, as you see in this slide, and will probably see me throughout the convention. <laughs> So some of the physical limitations that I have that uh, make it hard for me to use a standard game controller um, and, play, and, and play some video games um, are that I have a carpal tunnel in both of my wrists. Uh, this causes um, moderate pain in my hands and wrists when using fine motor skills. Um, fine motor skills are little tiny movements in our hands like you know writing, typing, using a game controller, uh, using your phone. Um, and I also get motion sickness playing open world games with large open spaces. Uh, this new Pokemon game has been hard for me. <laughs> so now we're going to get into some accessible game controllers. Uh, but first we're going to talk about adapters. Um, this helps um, a controller intended for one console to work on another console. Um, I have an example with me right now in my giant pile of wires. Uh, this is a GameCube controller and thanks to this adapter, um, this adapter here, it can work on a PC. It's like even got the GameCube controller port there. <laughs> um, some of them are plug and play, such as this one. Um, others require updates on a PC, um, and some of them, uh, the updates do work on Mac. Um, and just something to keep in mind if you're using an adapter, um, if you're going between um, uh, Xbox and Nintendo, the X and Y buttons are switched, and so are the A and B buttons. So first I'm going to talk a, kind of about a, a weird one um, that I found, um, dance mats um, as an accessible controller. Um, it avoids the need for fine motor skills completely. Like this is um, the best way for me to play a game with no pain. Um, the great part is, is that they come in a variety of uh, prices. You can either get a really like, cheap one for around $20 or if you want to invest in like a nice like metal arcade one, um, you're looking at the $1,700 range. Um, they can play games that require up to eight buttons. So I'm um, not only just rhythm games, but if you think about like Game Boy, um, you know, types of control settings, um, they could work for them as well. Um, they are available for many different systems, um, like such as PC and Mac, um, and 2000s era gaming consoles. Um, those who've lived during the 2000s uh, can remember how popular DDR was back in the day, and just about every system had it, for sure. <laughs> and um, the one that I use personally is the um, PC DeForce Mat. Um, it's like $60. Um, 
it's good for, like I would say, like standard mode in um, rhythm games. Um, and uh, problem is, is that it does slide all over the floor because it's a plastic map and not so much as the cheaper ones. And it hasn't ripped yet. Um, I've had that problem with dance mats. Um, and it's pretty responsive too, in my um, experience. Uh, some limitations, um, they're usually not plug and play on Mac. You have to use the Enjoy 2 app, which is that's actually what I'm doing to make um, this fight stick work on <laughs> my MacBook. Um, and also, it requires standing, physical activity, and gross motor movement, which um, isn't available um, to everyone. And some of the vintage models, um, so the ones from the 2000s, can have worn out sensors, even if you buy them new. That made me very sad one time when something I bought new only lasted a month. Um, and it also shakes up your home while playing, so um, if you live with your family, um, or if you live in an apartment complex, uh, it's, uh, it can be an issue. Uh, so the next one um, are arcade sticks and all button uh, arcade controllers. Um, so, I mean, I just showed you my GameCube one. Um, an example of an all button controller is, th is this one here. Um, so these would be, um, you know, like A, B, X, Y, the bumpers. And uh, these ones right here, this is left and right, this is down, and this is up for a D-pad. Um, what's great about these controllers is that they have uh, big buttons and, um, or big control stick and that don't require fingers to press. So um, on the days where my hands are really, really bad, um, I can just like slide my brace across the, um, the buttons and you know, it works just fine um, or just like rest my hand on top of the joystick. Um, so fingers are not needed. Um, it's available for most consoles thanks to the plethora of fighting games available um, and they have a great range of prices um, you know you can get like a $40 one or if you want to get like a really fancy one like usually around $300 um, they come in a variety of sizes you know as you can see this one's pretty small um, the one I'm using on my computer right now is is a medium but you can get like really big ones um, and there's good stock for most models um, you know once again thanks to the fighting game community um, some limitations. Uh, one joystick. So, a lot of games these days, you know, back to the, like you know the open world. Um, you need a stick for the camera and a stick to move around. Um, so this is not uh, conducive for um, you know, using a fight stick. And some joysticks only work as a D-pad. Um, I did not know this until I uh, tried using them for things other than fighting games. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Um, and uh, for some like more indie models of uh, fight sticks, the instructions may be hidden in discords, um, which I, I don't know why that is, um, but if you don't have a discord, that can be um, uh, difficult. Um, and some um, software installations and updates require a PC and a USB port, um, which not everyone has. Um, and uh, the compact design um, doesn't fit everyone's needs. I mean, the, regardless of how big you get it, the buttons um, tend to be pretty close together and that uh, might not fit everyone's needs. Um, so here are the five generations of um, controllers that I have. Um, that was the, saw the Snackbox Micro um, for Nintendo Switch, PS3 and 4, um, the Xbox One and Xbox Series S, and PC. Um, my partner has a Quanba for um, the 360, PS3, and PC. Um, my lovely Soul Calibur fight stick. Um, it's imported from Japan. And um, I actually use that to play Pokemon Puzzle League with an adapter, because um, I'm very into Pokemon Puzzle League. And I hope to see some of you at the tournament tonight if you're, if you're going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I even have um, a Nintendo 64 arcade stick, and that one's really cool because it actually does have both joysticks on it, and it works really well. Um, the reason I use the um, GameCube Fight Stick um, is because it's a little bit more accurate for Pokemon Puzzle League, but for like Mario Party and stuff, that's um, perfectly fine um, arcade stick there for the N64. So now I get to talk about the, my favorite, the adaptive controllers. So these are much newer um, and are more um, customizable to what you need. 
So um, this is the one that I use personally, the um, Xbox adaptive controller. Um, works on, uh, natively on uh, Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, and PC. Um, it's customizable to what you need. So um, they have these nice ports back here. And it, each port is for each button. Um, and you can plug in a peripheral in the back and it will work as that, bu as that button. And so you can place it wherever you need, like if you need to like, place it on a desk, on the floor. Um, it's um, really great how adaptive it is. Um, the great part too is it's well stocked. Um, you know, when my disability got to the point where I couldn't use a regular controller anymore, I ordered it right away, it came right away. Um, and there's also a co-pilot mode on Xbox One and Series S. Um, so um, one person could be using the adaptive controller and then they could have a friend or family member using um, just a regular Xbox controller and it will work as one controller. Um, so you can play games together or even if um, you just want to use um, the regular controller, like some parts of it and then some parts of the adaptive controller. It's a really... Um, cool feature. Um, and what's great is they um, consulted disability and veterans organizations when designing the controller um, to make sure it, you know, it works well for people. Um, and even the packaging is accessible when you get it in the mail. Um, there is a fabric tab that you just lift up and the box is open. Like, ta-da, there's your controller. Um, and just this part by itself, the, like the main hub, is um, $100. Um, so this one I haven't used personally, but um, it came out a little bit after the Xbox Adaptive Controller, maybe like four or five years after. Um, and this is the Hori Flex Controller for Nintendo Switch and PC. Um, it was designed by a company that specializes in technology for people with disabilities. Um, it's a similar concept with some more smaller buttons on the controller itself. Um, and they range from 250 to uh, $175. Um, I've had a hard time finding them at first, but I did find them in stock on the Able Gamers website. Um, so if that's something you're interested in trying. Um, and hot off the presses, just as I finished this panel, Sony decided to come out with this, which is really cool. Um, we got the Project Leonardo. Um, so this was um, created by Consulting with Disability and Veterans Organizations, so we love to hear that. Um, it includes swappable components to customize the controller buttons um, you know, on that like central hub there. Uh, it's got also has a co-pilot with up to um, th oh, is it, it's up to three controllers can be used as one controller, um, which is also great to hear. And instead of having a whole bunch of um, ports like the Xbox One does, it has four of them um, on the controller itself. So um, at least that's what the PlayStation blog was saying. I've never seen this thing in real life, um, so they I don't know if they're going to change that. Um, and uh, there's no price or release date yet. Um, so very excited to see, um, you know, how this does. Um, so now we're going to talk about adaptive controller peripherals. And I'm going to preface this by saying that um, I have only used the Xbox adaptive controller. So the peripherals that I talk about here, which are all peripherals that I've used myself, I don't know if they work on the Nintendo or the um, PlayStation 1 that's coming out. Um, that's, that's my setup for Slime Rancher um, uh, with lots of wires. As you can see, there's lots of wires all around here. <laughs> So um, first I'm going to talk about the Logitech Adaptive Gaming Kit for um, the uh, Xbox Adaptive Controller. Um, it comes with seven buttons of various sizes, two Velcro boards to attach them to if needed, um, Velcro stickers to place on the back of the buttons to place them wherever you need, and some stickers to decorate. Um, I actually brought um, mine. Um, so this is the Velcro board that you get two of these, which is really nice. And one of them is more flexible than the other, like it has more bends in it. And um, this is my current setup to play Pokemon Scarlet. Um, and so buttons of different sizes. 
Um, and they have, as you can see from my mess of cords, nice long cords, which is a really good thing. So um, if I want to have like some of the buttons in my lap and some of them on the floor to press with my feet, um, that's an option. I've seen some people who have um, connected them to like parts of their wheelchair so they could like hit the buttons with their head or with their feet. Um, and they are, this pack is also very well stocked. Um, like once again, I just ordered it right away and it came. Um, and it's also in accessible packaging. So um, it opens using a Velcro. Um, so no need to get like a knife out and cut any tape. Um, and uh, this pack is about $100 for all this stuff. Um, though something to keep in mind that the buttons don't respond well to button mashing. So um, I am no longer a slosher main in Splatoon and I'm a little sad about that. <laughs> But I also want to say why $100 is a really good price for this. Um, now, I haven't used any of these like types of switches like in my daily life outside of gaming, um, but they do work on the adaptive controller um, like as buttons, um, which is really cool if you like already use these in your daily life. Um, but as you can see, they are a little bit pricey. Um, and luckily, Able Gamers has them on sale for $20, so if you need them, um, just wanna let that know. But still, even if you're buying every single button on the controller, that kinda adds up. So it was nice of Logitech to make this nice pack for only $100. So it's seven, seven buttons plus the stickers and the boards. Um, so it's really, honestly, um, in, in, my, in my opinion, it's a pretty good deal, um, considering what you could have been paying. Um, oh, is, is it okay if we save the questions for the end? Um, uh, yeah. It was about one of those switches out there. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what, yeah what's up? Um, I have some experience using the big red. Which yeah. They work with these different communication. Oh, okay. And I imagine what the difference is is that it was like plate size. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's really good Oh, okay, cool. That makes a lot more sense than as to why they're so big. They are, they are big. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, good to know. That's uh, another thing if anyone needs to. Alternatives for burning and money. Oh, yeah. Thank you for sharing. That's awesome. All right. Um, so, the, um, the next one I want to talk about is the 3D rudder foot mouse. Um, it works um, as a regular commu computer mouse on PC. It's um, kind of like a balance board, but don't stand on it, you will break it. Um, you just kind of like direct with your feet tilting where um, you want to go. Um, and it also works as a control stick with the Xbox Adaptive Controller. There is a one foot option available, um, if that's something you need. Uh, some things about it that have limitations is that it slides around on the carpet. Um, it needs to be recalibrated often. So if you're doing like fast paced gameplay, that might become a problem. Um, but if you're playing something like Pokemon or Slime Rancher, um, it's not a huge issue, um, or at least for me. And uh, the other thing too is it can be tiring to your legs after long periods of use, or at least for me, <laughs> um, it has been. Um, they're usually about, like this thing is, um, like about over $100. Um, when I originally had bought it from the 3D Rudder website, and then when I was doing this panel, I looked and it was sold out, but I did see it in stock on other websites, but for more expensive than the 3D Rudder website was selling it for. Um, so um, if you want to use it, um, they might you might have some luck looking at those uh, other websites, or they could have restocked it by now, which would be really cool. Um, and I also want to talk about some um, Warfighter engaged um, Xbox adaptive controller peripherals. Uh, this is an all volunteer organization that builds uh, free accessible controllers for veterans um, and all money from civilian peripheral sales uh, goes to funding um, free accessible controllers for veterans. Um, so that's really cool. Um, they make a variety of joysticks um, and buttons with mounting hardware options. Um, so you could um, like screw them into like a table um, um, or something else to make them more sturdy. Um, what I've bought from them is the Joysticks L. Um, this was $65. Um, I will add that it worked really well at first, but it started drifting um, for about a, like in about a year. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm clumsy and I drop things or if it's um, you know, a construction issue, so I, I don't know what would cause that. Um, but the drifting um, isn't too, too bad, or it's like unusable. Um, and the items are made to order, um, so keep that in mind. And the organization also takes a break in the summer. 
jamming over there. Nice. <laughs> and, um, so when um, the drifting um, of the previous peripheral uh, just gives me too much trouble, um, I bought this to replace it, the Hyperkin Trooper 2. I, I don't have it with me right now. Um, it's a control stick um, that works on the Xbox adaptive controller for console gaming, but it also advertises as working on PC, Mac, and Raspberry Pi. I just haven't used it myself um, for the, those purposes. It's about $22, so um, that's, that's good to see. Um, and it's also a good stock. I ordered mine on eBay. Um, but I've seen it on like Amazon um, and other places. Uh, the accuracy isn't great. <laughs> it's uh, you kind of have to force it. <laughs> um, so once again, back to uh, you know slower video games that you know it works better on like you know Pokemon. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work when using a Brook adaptive controller to make, not, sorry, a Brook um, adapter to make it the Xbox adaptive controller work on PS4 and Switch. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but just something to keep in mind if you uh, mainly use those consoles um, and you're using an Xbox adaptive controller. Um, so I'm not a keyboard gamer, um, but uh, these are two um, things that I use for my work. Um, one of which is a vertical mouse, um, which you've been seeing me use. And what's great about it is that you don't have to tilt your hand like a regular mouse. Um, you can just, you know, it, it's much, much more comfortable. Um, after long periods of use, it's, it still gives me pain, but so much less more than if I was using a regular mouse. Um, and the other thing I want to talk about is the ZSA Moonlander keyboard. Um, it's both an ergonomic and an ortholinear keyboard, and I have not seen any other keyboard that is both. Um, it's great, it's really portable, it folds up, um, and it's got nice long cords so you can spread out um, if you need. And in honor of Pokemon Scarlet, um, I just want to also mention C-bands um, for motion sickness. Um, for me personally, it has not solved all my motion sickness, um, but it does help a little bit. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, you'll, you know what's best for you. So I just I just wanted to put the, put them out there. If, you know, if anyone was thinking about trying them. Um, so in case we have any software designers in the audience, uh, while I have your ear, um, I'll just talk about some ways that software designers can help um, people with disabilities enjoy their games. Um, first off, having closed captioning and subtitles with multiple sizes and fonts, um, and including captions for tone of voice. Um, a lot can get lost in text, um, like in terms of you know, emotions, nuance, you know, all that. Um, so having the, the emotion listed um, can be really helpful. And it can also be helpful for people who have trouble recognizing emotion from a tone of voice um, or a facial expression. Um, also to having audio descriptions. So this would be um, like an audio cue on, um, you know, within the audio saying what's happening in a room um, or happening in, um, in a scene. So that can be helpful for people with, um, with visual disabilities um, or those who get overwhelmed by lots of things on the screen and just wondering what's going on. Um, also like to see uh, more support for sign languages. I was so happy to see that Forza um, has support for both um, American Sign Language and British Sign Language. So I'm hoping to see that in more games and more sign languages supported because there's lots of different sign languages um, all over the world. Um, also having an optional over-the-shoulder view for first-person video games that can help a lot with motion sickness um, for some people, um, including myself. Um, and um, also having voice controls in video games um, would be really cool. I, I know that there's a mod out there for uh, Stardew Valley in which someone could completely um, control the game with their voice. I wish it was an official thing, um, but it's awesome that it's a mod and is available. Um, that's, how I, that's how I type my notes at work and um, use my phone. Um, so it'd be cool to play video games that way as well. 
Um, I also want to mention um, having specific content warnings, um, such as you know flashing lights for those who are sensitive to that, um, as well as um, sensitive content and being specific about what it is. Um, so then someone will know if um, they may be triggered by a video game and may or may not want to want to play it. Um, or at least be mindful that that's what they might encounter in the game. Um, also having multiple colorblind options. Um, I've heard there's multiple different types of colorblindness, so having, um, you know, having a choice um, is, you know, is really good so someone can pick what's best for them. Um, and also having visual cues for audio needed for gameplay. Um, and this is great, you know, not only for those with hearing disabilities, but also for people who have to play the game with no sound, not to bother their neighbors or their family, um, or if you're playing a game in public. Um, uh, the other thing I want to talk about, too, um, is auto camera. Um, it is so nice when I'm able to play a game with just one um, control stick. Um, and actually, Pokemon Scarlet has excellent auto camera. Um, I very rarely have to switch the port on my um, adaptive controller to then see something. Um, and it makes the game so much easier for me to play. Um, and the other thing I want to talk about too, I know this kind of sounds like an interesting one, um, having motion controls and gyro. Um, I, but also having them be optional, because not everyone can use motion controls. Like I, um, I hope that someday there's a patch for um, for the, the new the, the Nintendo Switch Sports, so people um, who can only use buttons can play. Um, but what's um, you know cool about motion controls is that it's you know gross motor movements, so people who can't do the fine motor movements can still play the game. And um, I think a lot about how Wii Sports opened up gaming to so many more people who may have not had the chance to play video games before. So I'd like to see some of, some of that moving forward. Um, also, uh, the optional removal of button mashing, um, very painful. And as I always mentioned, um, well, for some people, very painful for some people. And um, also, too, the buttons on this yeah. don't button mash well. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, and uh, the other one too is simple control schemes. Um, when a game has every single button on the controller being used, I have to go find a button to plug in <laughs> to this. And we are we just talked about how buttons are can be a lot of money. So simple control schemes are an option for a simple control scheme in games is, um, would be great. And also uh, D-pad support. Um, some games that have D-pad support that you wouldn't think. Um, uh, Mario Kart. Mario Kart 8, you can play with a fight stick. Um, Tetris. Uh, the um, the new uh, Diamond and Pearl remakes for Pokemon. All I've, I was all able to play them on a fight stick. Um, so it'd be great, you know, great to see more of that. Um, and I also want to talk about um, high contrast modes. So that's when the things that are the most important in a video game are highlighted in a special color. Um, I have a screenshot here from uh, The Last of Us uh, using that. Um, so that can be helpful not only for people with visual disabilities, um, but those who, like, once again, are um, overwhelmed by a lot of things on the screen. Um, and so they can know like where to go and what to do. Um, so, and also if I have any game industry people <laughs> in the audience, um, especially uh, who have, you know, people working for Sony, um, I, now, I don't have a PS5, so I have not tested this myself, but I have heard online that the PS5 blocks third-party controllers. Um, please, if someone correct me if I'm wrong on that, but now I'm so glad that they are making an, assess an accessible controller, and I think that's wonderful. Um, though something to keep in mind that not every controller works for every person. Um, again, I, and I mentioned like the there's only four like 3.5 millimeter aux ports on it, um, and that might not work for someone. Um, so I hope that they will no longer block third-party controllers. Um, because um, I was uh, listening to someone in an interview say that, you know, I have a PS5, but it is a paperweight to me. Um, and that's really sad. It would be a paperweight to me, too. Um, like, I, 
I can, can't hold a regular PS5 controller until they come out with this accessible controller, and I don't even know if it's going to work for me. So anyway, I would choose the giant Mareep um, for me personally <laughs> at this moment. Um, and also, um, some other things the game industry can do to help is um, make affordable, accessible controller peripherals for all consoles and keep them stocked. Um, I ran into so many times where I'd be like, oh wow, that looks great. I would really like to plug that into my Xbox adaptive controller and it's been out of stock since 2018. Um, and the other thing too, I, I know I've talked a lot about these, um, you know, the joysticks. Um, there's some of them that are, a lot of them that are $300. Um, and um, which is, you know, great if you already have them or, um, or if um, you know if you can afford that, that's awesome. Um, but that is, isn't in everyone's price range. So I hope that they can make some more affordable options. Um, and also, uh, co-pilot gaming on all consoles. Um, something about going from Xbox to Nintendo is that at least with the adapters that I'm using, there's no minus button equivalent. And uh, that's really annoying when you're trying to play Animal Crossing and you can't save your game without getting up out of your chair and then picking up the switch and then pressing the minus button. And I mean, thankfully I have the privilege that I'm able to do that um, and not everyone does. And if there was a co-pilot option on um, the um, Nintendo Switch, that, you know, that wouldn't be an issue for a lot of people. Um, and most importantly, hire gamers with disabilities. Look at, yeah! But seriously, look at all this cool stuff that we've gotten, you know, consulting disability experts and people with disabilities. We know what we want, like, and we want to play games. Like, we just, we just want to play the games, and, you know, that's, that's money in your pockets. <laughs> um, so, um, so please, you know, no game that I've ever heard of has ever um, been worse because they've had a more diverse group of people working on it. Um, so, yeah, how are those people? And I just wanted to um, just add some um, informational resources um, as well. Um, there's some great game hardware and accessibility reviews on YouTube by um, Laura K. Buzz, Steve Saylor, and All Access Life. Um, and there's some also great Xbox adaptive controller tutorials on YouTube um, by my mate Vince. Um, without that man's video, I would not know how to set up my Xbox adaptive controller on my Switch and I would be a very sad person. <laughs> so um, that guy is really great. and. Um, there's also a lot of um, Xbox adaptive peripheral news on Twitter by the co-presenter Bryce, I mean, co-presenter, co-inventor Bryce Johnson. Um, that's how I knew that the Hyperkin Trooper worked on the Xbox adaptive controller. Um, so go check those out if you're interested. All right, enough of me talking. Um, so does anyone like have any um, experiences um, with you know being a gamer with disabilities or helping um, a gamer with disabilities that you know that they'd like to share or any any questions about what was presented or any comments? Um, there is a um, mic right there if you want to go up to the mic. Um, so I understand we got some jamming happen <laughs> happening next door. Um, uh, but uh, if you need the mic brought to you, um, uh, Bub, if you would like to be the person to bring a mic if someone needs the mic brought to them, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, does anyone have any stories, comments, questions? Uh, yes, sir. Um, can you hear me, like, from here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, just anyone in the back, can you hear him? Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, oh, we, we got some thumbs up over, over there. The okay, yeah, yeah, whatever you want to do, man. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so my question is, I was wondering, does the Xbox adaptive controller or any other sort of accessibility controller have haptic feedback? Are there peripherals? Is that something that's still kind of neglected? Uh, not that I know of. Um, I um, That is actually something that um, is kind of sad to miss out on. Um, 
I heard all these great reviews about um, Stray having like really like cute purring, like haptic feedback. Um, but but no, it's, it's at least that I know of. Um, I, I don't I don't think so. And if any, does anyone know if there are or? No, okay, yeah, but that's that a good question though. That's something that people got to think about, like especially with the PS5 having that, you know, well, I know Nintendo called it the HD rumble, but uh, I forgot what they called the, the haptic feedback. Yeah, they were, I, I don't know if they called it something different, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Um, so I work as a PT, uh, oh, yeah. and I'm trying to kind of bridge the gap between um, maybe like my more normal population versus like people who need more adaptive equipment. Yeah. Um, so whenever that's their goal to just be able to return to gaming, um, I would see this as a big resource. Am I able to um, get the PowerPoint or anything like that? Or oh, yeah, they, um, this is going to be uploaded to YouTube. Um, okay. On the Magfest website in a few months, um, so you know, uh, you know, you definitely uh, get it, get it there, and uh, hopefully it turns, you know, turns out okay. Um, but if not, I'm going to have my contact information, um, and um, I'll be happy to um, to send you the PowerPoint. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad it was helpful. <laughs> Hi. Hi there. Um, so I have a question. So I noticed that we're talking very much about console gaming here, but mm. um, so I work in like usability testing mm. and we've been doing a lot more VR. And to be honest, we, we do need to do more research with the more disabled community. We've been doing kind of just like more broad spectrum stuff and then like honing in. But do you any, have any personal accounts or friends who had personal accounts where they found like inefficiencies with the handheld devices with like the Oculus Quest or mm -hmm. the other um, sort of VR devices that also have handheld technology? Uh, so um, I, I'll be honest, I haven't tried VR personally yet, um, partially because of that motion sickness thing, I've, I've been afraid of it, um, mm -hmm. but I would l I love to eventually try it. Um, in terms of like, what I've heard about it, I know that the 3D rudder that I mentioned earlier, um, mm -hmm. that was actually meant for VR. Um, and then, or at least that's what I, I assumed from their website, because they kept talking about VR. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that that's compatible, but um, but otherwise, I'm sorry, I haven't heard too much of the, you know, other than like the concerns about motion sickness. Gotcha. Um, so, so it's the 3D rudder? The 3D rudder, yep. The 3D rudder foot mouse. Um, on their website, they were advertising it as working with VR. Okay. Um, so, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't know too much about it. No, that was that was great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Hello. I am a partially verbal person, so forgive me if I can get my, if I get my language wrong, but is it, what would be the best way for a, for example, a guild in a large scale MMO to integrate a player who requires adaptive equipment to communicate to the other guild members? So, um, so do you mean like chat in a video like game? Some of, some of the video game communities demand I use chat to mm -hmm. use vi voice chat, and how might I integrate someone who is not non-speaking or mm -hmm. requires additional assistive equipment to to play the game fully? Because I am very eager to start WoW again, but the ableism in that community, mm -hmm. 10 to 15 to 18 years ago, has been a big draw back and causing me to quit. Oh, no, no, and thank you for, for sharing your story. I'm autistic with a PDA profile, pathological demand avoidance, and speaking in a voice chat is a dem could be a demand that distracts me from playing the mechanics of the game, so that is why I've been asking that question. Yeah, no, no, th thank you, thank you for, letting, for letting me know and, um, and for sharing your story. And yeah, that, that is something that, um, you know, definitely needs to be addressed in video games. Um, I think it was Ape Apex Legends, if I remember correctly, is having some sort of um, uh, like messaging system. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you could like press a button and then it would say something in a way that you can connect with the other members of your team. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, what I, I think about too. Um, I know this kind of. I don't know if this sounds a little bit silly, but uh, this, you know, Splatoon. Um, you know, and, and I know everyone's talked about the awfulness of um, the Nintendo voice chat, um, but in Splatoon. 
um, you know, they have like the, like, you know, either the ouch or booyah or this way. Um, and I would love to see that implemented in other games too, because you're absolutely right. It's, um, it's, it's um, hard to engage in teamwork activities when the option for, when, when there's not an option for nonverbal um, players. Oh, yeah. I'd like to add to that, that like um, games like Monster Hunter, whenever you're doing like a certain action or something, it'll have an automatic call out mm -hmm. to show that like your character is doing that. And depending on what region the, your teammates are playing in, it'll translate it automatically. Oh. So like, that's an example of it, trying to be more accessible to everyone, including you know people who don't speak the same languages or people who are nonverbal. Yeah. Oh, that, that's awesome. Uh, Bob? I kind of wanted to add on to that where games like Overwatch or even the new game, uh, Venom Evolution, they have a thing where it's like, if you look at a direction and you hold a button down, there's a thing that says, like, meet up at this point or go mm -hmm. go over to this area and stuff like that. Um, I would only say to my problem is that, again, you got to hold down a button and then go through at least one or two menus to get them. Mm -hmm. So if they make yeah. a way to make that easier, it was, I would say that's a lot. Plus, I found out that the games in foreign languages which have these modes caused me to improve my listening skills in said mm -hmm. language because the game reacts to your ability to comprehend the, the instructions the game presents. Mm -hmm. oh. like, a discussion, a, like a reading test, more or less. Um, oh, that's awesome. Well, th thanks so much for bringing up that topic. Uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, I, oh, God. <laughs> Nailed it. I've got two questions because I'm fancy. Um, one quick question is, I know, forgive me if you've already mentioned this, um, like how do you get, how much are like replacement parts, say like what are your buttons like dies, you know? Oh, do you have to yeah. buy a new console adaptive s controller? I hope not for your sake. Oh yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, so, um, so, this, so just the, um, just like the central hub, mm -hmm. um, this is a hundred. Yeah. And um, the I haven't. That's a good point. I have not seen like the button pack sold individually. Mm -hmm. Like you know, if you just wanted one more button, um, yeah. that would be really great. I I don't know if uh, there's any Xbox executives in the room, uh, but mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a good point. I think I I think that would be really great to yeah. just be able to just buy like one or two because, you know, there are more than seven buttons on a controller. So. Yeah, the, yeah, just just something so you can replace it whenever need whenever because I imagine the A button will die faster than like yeah. the X button. Uh, and then the second question I had is I am a caregiver for a lovely young woman. Um, um, and she's trying to, she's slowly integrating into like the Nintendo Switch and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been playing like Mario Party and stuff like that. Um, but like because she has like her autism is more like developmentally, you know, mm -hmm. she's having a bit more delays and having a hard time processing. I mean, I do too, uh, just processing instructions and then mm -hmm. trying to apply that. What's a? Do you have any advice for like any any games that I could maybe like nudge her to? You know, just like like here you love Mario Party or Mario Kart. You know, here's something else that's also you know you don't get overwhelmed with directions and all that. Mm. You know, it takes her a couple tries to get through like a mini game, for example, in Mario Party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so you mean like games with um, like a more simple control scheme? Well, uh, not necessarily. It's just like. I don't know how to put it other than because you know how Mario Party changes like directions so oh, quickly. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's she can process it fine, but it takes her a bit longer than I than I, I wish it did. I wish it didn't mm. take as long. Like no, no. Let, let me try that again. Mm. I I want like her to feel happy with how you know yeah. she's processing and and she like I said she's a lovely woman so I want her to have that confidence. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, like in. I know that there's a couple games out there. I th I think, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, God of I, mean, I, I don't, I'm sorry. These sound like kind of like more intense games, but um, uh, like God of War Ragnarok and um, and Psychonauts have modes in them where um, you can just go through the story. Like yeah. you don't have to worry about dying or anything like that. Cool. Um, like you're still you're still moving. Like you're still playing a game. Like. We wouldn't want, you know, the whole point of a game is to play the game. Like, mm -hmm. we wouldn't want, like, people to, you know, feel like they're not getting that part of it. Yeah. Um, 
um, I'm trying to think. I know Kirby, Kirby's got um, like an easier Kirby. mode with easy. Kirby. Oh, you're gonna recommend Kirby? Yeah, I was gonna recommend because um, a lot of the Kirby games are 2D platforms or like two and a half D. Yeah. It's a very contained environment, uh -huh. and there's very few like quick activities. You can like walk into a scene. Yeah. Figure out what steps to take and then take those steps. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And, um, the new Kirby games are really great for that. I like very easy games. My husband has it. Yeah, because I know she would love Animal Crossing, but I'm thinking like I don't want to just suggest that to her, you know, because I don't want to like, I never want to talk down to her, right? You know. Mm. Also, that said, suggestions for developers out there: have your tutorial, have your game control panel like access accessible at all times, yes. like or tutorials yes. accessible at all times. It's really nice for people like me who's like. I process things and I get it, and then my memory's like a goldfish. I'll yeah. forget. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Thank um, you. Oh yeah, no, thank you. But thinking too about um, maybe is it Slime Rancher is nice is has a pretty simple control setup and um, it's not it's not like a super hard game either. Um, thinking maybe maybe that one um, nice and calming or Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. Oh, nice. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if anyone else has any suggestions, feel free to raise your hand. Um, yeah. Thank you. Those are really. Good, those are really good questions. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Testing. Hello. Uh, so I just had like a very brief comment. Uh, uh, just as someone who also is developing Carpal Tunnel in my mm -hmm. right hand, and has a family history on both sides of arthritis, that's really bad. We have like a nickname for mm -hmm. it and stuff like that. Um, I really appreciated this presentation and all of the examples you gave because mm -hmm. there's only so much that those cheap hand braces and like wrist braces yeah. can do to mitigate the pain after like maybe 30 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. of any activity, be it drawing, gaming, just browsing. Uh, so I'm definitely going to check some of these out and I just think it benefits like such a wide demographic, uh, no matter like how mild or severe the symptoms are. So I just really appreciate all the examples. I'm definitely taking notes to help uh, mitigate my own pain as well. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad it was helpful. And, and, good, and good luck on your journey um, you. with that, too. I'll have my contact info if you'd ever have like any more questions about these. Um, it, it's up for everyone, too. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I, I just <laughs> I had a comment I wanted to give. I, I work as a DSP for people with disabilities, and one of my clients loves Resident Evil, mm -hmm. and he really wants to play the games, but he has a, um, a disability where he just he can't read Mm. at all just he can't um, process it and so that's like kept him from being able to play it so you know one of the features that I kind of was hoping to see in the future maybe would be like I don't know exactly what you call it but like text to voice where like yeah. it could read out yeah. like the notes and the parchments that does it Oh wow, I didn't know that. That's great. Is it also possible to develop like a video AI filter that reads down the text that reads the screen and speaks down the text that appears? I hope that's intentional. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that'd be really awesome. Cause, um, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad the PS5 has something like that. And um, I was also thinking about too if they're playing it on PC, if it, they have a screen reader, it might be helpful. Or unfortunately, they don't have a PC powerful uh, enough to yeah. play something like Resident Evil. But you know, I it's just the feature that I was thinking about while you were naming off all the different features that developers should include, just so more because he he loves the like he loves the Resident Evil movies, and he keeps mm -hmm. asking me you know to help him play the game. So I just read out to him like the notes and stuff that he picks up. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. See feedback. Very, very cult classic game. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. I love, love cult classic games <laughs> and Pokemon Puzzle League. <laughs> it's, uh, Shira. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> so I don't know if this is quite related, but do you know if there's resources in terms of being a streamer to be more accessible in terms of, because you, especially, because I, I didn't even think about, you mentioned the audio captions having inflection. Mm. Yeah. And I'm wondering, I wasn't sure if there was something already existing or something like kind of like gui guidelines, to, excuse me, to follow for that. Oh, yeah, no, I, uh, yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> while you're talking, if there's subtitles that are interesting. Um if you have free time after that, I can give you all the links to that. Oh, I would definitely, I would love <laughs> yeah. that, yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah awesome. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. I didn't even think about that. Uh -huh. That's awesome. Uh -huh. yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. My field is for visual impairment, which is also why I'm very happy you brought us just these two texts. If you are a streamer, please describe what you're doing and the gaps in your That's a huge one that a lot of people forget about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, excellent, yeah. yeah th thank you, that's awesome. Ah. Ah, so, it, any other questions or comments? Ah. Great. Um, so, here's my contact information. Um, I don't really do anything else on the internet except for my cosplay page. I know that's weird. Um, like I don't have like a, a streaming account or anything like that. So, but you can use that information to, um, you know, to ask me about anything today or if there's any other comments that you wanted to give. Um, I also wanted to add too that in the guidebook, are, the panels can be rated. So if you want to give feedback on the panel, um, please do. Um, yeah. So thank you so much, everyone. This was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I hope you, so thanks so much to everyone you know who shared their experiences and um, and yeah, have a wonderful rest of your magfest. Woo! <laughs>